Hi, my name is Pedro Lopez, and it is my pleasure to present our Tokai paper, Whose Touch Is This?, where we investigated the agency trade-off between touch gestures that are voluntarily performed by a user and touch gestures that are originated from a haptic device that controls the user's muscles. This was co-authored with my colleague Jun Nishida here at the University of Chicago, as well as with our collaborators at Sony, lead author Daisuke Tajima and Shunichi Kasahara, who are also here to present our paper. The work I'm presenting today is our third investigation in this series on agency. Our interest started when we, along certainly many in HCI, noticed a pivotal moment in our interfaces. Not only we are surrounded by wearables that can sense muscle movements, but also by wearable haptic devices that it can directly actuate the user's body. Our community has been exploring some remarkable ways to extend our body by actuating the user's muscles into performing involuntary actions, such as this exoskeleton that makes a user play the drums, or using muscle stimulation to steer the user into avoiding a collision, or using muscle stimulation to give a user an accelerated reaction time so that they would catch a falling object that they would normally miss. Now, these provide the benefit of computer-assisted physical ability. But for all of these to work, they require preemptive actuation. In other words, you can only ensure that the system plays the drums or avoids the obstacle or catches the pen by actuating before the user would normally move. And this raises a very difficult question. Doesn't moving before the user negatively impact their sense of agency? Because the users now feel like they did not initiate the action. This, we think, is one of the most important questions in HCI. In 2019, we started investigating this at the simple example of this falling object in an attempt to understand the relationship between our sense of agency and a participant's sense of their own reaction time. As you would expect, if you try to catch this falling pen by yourself, you will certainly feel maximum agency, but you are probably not fast enough to catch it before it falls. Now, let's plot your fastest reaction time. You would assume that any muscle stimulation that causes you to catch the pen faster than your own sense of your fastest reaction time would result in you immediately knowing that you didn't do it, and thus resulting in sort of a binary sense of agency. Either you did it, or you were helped by the muscle stimulation. But we asked ourselves, what if we keep pushing the muscle stimulation timing closer and closer and closer and closer to your own reaction time? Is this sense of agency always an absolute step response? In our Chi-19 paper, we found out that it is not. In fact, you can find points in this agency curve that allow you to optimize for both agency and speed up, or even points where a very small gain in speed up has virtually no impact on agency. Using this, we showed how to optimize for both agency and reaction time for this simple pen drop example, or for this application that helps users taking pictures of very fast moving objects, like this baseball right here. Now, this study had a key and big limitation. The user's intention was always aligned with the computer's intention. In other words, the user and the computer wanted the same thing. There was no choice. This is precisely what we tackle in today's paper, in which we examine the effect of choices by the user in their feeling of agency during these preemptive computer-generated touches. I'll explain what we did. At first, choice task we used. Let's try. Your task is to choose the right text, sometimes red, sometimes blue colored. Okay, ready, set, go. Right is answer. You can see front end. How about this? Ready, set, go. Left is answer. I guess you you takes a little bit time. This is a stupid effect. Mismatch between the semantic and color information increases the difficulty to find the target. We use this as a choice task. Mass legitimation can modify the, its outcome. How to do that? This is the procedure. Waiting, queuing, then task. Hash to do the task, and, and also mass legitimation act the user finger to respond. After that, the feedback is presented. Then, Punch pattern need, need to write the sense of agency for its action. We also control the role of the master situation. One is the assisting. Master situation makes the user success. And also, adversarial. Master situation makes the user failure. 
In addition, we control the timing of the master situation faster or slower than user's input. Next result. We found four patterns. User incorrect and correct, or EMS correct or incorrect. First, I'll explain the congruent pattern, same hand pattern. We can find the smooth distribution aligned with the EMS timing and also outcome biases. This means patch fund and the computer are well matched. In contrast, in congruent condition, the different hand pattern, the patch fund distinguished clearly from the computer driven touch. Taken together, we found a different agency profile based on the dependency between the user and computer driven touch. Let's summarize our finding. We found two things. One is the clear distinction for sensible agency based on the user computer congruency. Second is the positive outcome biases where user and computer were aligned. I'd like to discuss how we can use our results for future designing human computer integration touch. Based on our result, we can construct a quadrant for design space of the human computer integration touch. So let's investigate each quadrant. The here, this is the most desirable situation in integration. It can be seen as a joint success, where the user and the computer are doing the correct action. In this situation, the performance being faster and the agency can be both optimized together which means the like master situation can accelerate in reaction time, yet preserving sense of agency. In contrast, the enforced success where the computer drives the touch for correct action, even user had a mistake. Obviously, the user will not have a sense of agency in the motion, but this provides different benefits since user can avoid danger by computer driven touch to avoid touching hot object like this video. So if we want to prioritize the safety, the system should help even losing sense of agency. The fourth failure is a situation that may not be beneficial. However, we can also leverage this associating the action from our body. For instance, we can even play a game with other agent inside our body. Joint failure where the user and the computer touch incorrect action could be also interesting design. As we mentioned, the negative bias, a user would have less agency in failure task. This might be beneficial for keeping the motivation and self-efficacy in human computer integration system. Taken together, we construct agency assistant trade-off matrix, which can be used for designing human computer integration touch. From the lines of our work, we have been investigating the sense of agency design for human computer integration touch. So thank you for listening to our talk and happy to discuss with you.